Hi guys, welcome back to another video here in Melbourne, Australia. Today I'm going to show you uh, the Ross Creek Tropicals that I recently planted in the ground. So even though everything is uh, sunny and blue and colorful and pretty and what have you, again guys, we're having um, a rather mild, cool end to spring, unfortunately. We'll do another quick temperature check on the uh, outdoor thermometer here under the ice cream bean tree. And you'll see, as tropical as it all is, guys, that um, <clears throat> looks can be very deceiving. There's the temperature right there. Um, what does it say? 17.5 to 18 Celsius. So it's between 17 and 18 Celsius. Very, very cool for uh, late spring, right? Meanwhile, um, the rest of Australia is burning up. They're in the 30s Celsius. Yeah, that's the difference. So it's an uphill battle to uh, to do tropicals here, but we march on, guys. We march on. So even though it's only 16 to 18 Celsius, the the tropical flowers are still popping open, and these are in ground. They're not in pots, right? Yeah. So you don't need 30 Celsius to have a tropical fruit and uh, ornamental flower garden but it does help of course to have um, warmth as much as possible okay so I got four trees right from Ross Creek and um, the first one is right up at the end of the driveway or at the top of the driveway it's the um, Florigon. There it is right there. In between the uh, geranium flowers. So um, we have a yellow cherry guava there. Right, which is the uh, lemon guava. And there we have a banana. So it's going to be right in the middle. And uh, we're talking about a grafted mango, not not a not a seedling. And just like every other tree that I'm planting, it's all native soil, guys. No amendments at all. I repeat that because not every viewer is following every video that I'm making, right? So maybe if you've missed out on previous videos, I plant only in native soil. And then, on top, I add uh, mulch, mulch from my own garden, right, uh, chop and drop, lawn clippings, and um, traces of compost to get the tree started. And after a month, I'll uh, fertilize with sl slow-release organic um, fertilizer. So that's tree number one along the driveway here right tree number two is geez look at all these trees here I've gone tropo I sure have time short guys time is short Especially when you're older, like me. When you're in your 20s, it's like putting things off, right? But when you're 50 and 60, you got to plant as much as you can, as quick as you can. Because these sooks are really slow here in um, the cool, cool climate zone. They're not like plum trees. Plum trees grow fast. Right? This, this guy has fruited in the first year. First year fruit. But not um, not the tropicals. All right, this is the second tree. 
I ran out of room in the driveway, so I couldn't use the driveway any longer without pulling out the pineapple guavas, the mandarin, and the um, the uh, Suriname cherry. One of the viewers from Sydney said to pull out the Suriname cherry, which hasn't fruited in eight years. But guys, I can't do that. And um, I just can't do it. It's too established and mature to pull out. I, I can't pull out an old tree like that. Now, a young tree like this cherry moya, yeah, I can pull this out. It's only been in the ground a year and a half. I have no problems pulling this tree out. But an eight-year-old tree, nah, can't do that. All right, so tree number two is um, this mango here. And this mango cost a fortune, a small fortune, right? And I have it squeezed in between the, um, let's see, the bacon avocado, the um, white cherry moya, and the um, shepherd avocado, right? So it's just tight squeeze in here. There it is, that little thing there. <laughs> That's the little mango there. Mango number two is that little guy there. Unfortunately, it's so small. But what can you do, guys? That's all that's, all that's available in Australia for that particular um, variety. And directly behind it is uh, the Dwarf Ducas banana, which is doing really well. Bananas do great here. Well, almost all bananas, not the Red Daca. Red Daca sucks here. Doesn't doesn't seem to do well at all as far as fruiting so that's tree number two and the variety is <clears throat> let's have a look that's the sweet tart not sweetheart sounds like sweetheart but it's sweet tart two words right and this one, as I said, was very expensive. It was double the price of the Florigon. Could have got two Florigons for one of these. So let's see how special it really is, if it ever fruits here. Um, since, I, since I received it, some of the leaves have turned brown. I don't know why. In the first few days, see those there? They were green when the tree arrived. And that one there, and that one there. So, I don't know what that's all about. It definitely hasn't been hot. Looks like um, sun damage. But trust me, guys, since I received uh, this tree, the temperature has not been above 20. Has not been above 20. Look, look at, I'll show you the, the current time at at two in the afternoon what does it say it's 15 it's 15 celsius at two in the afternoon right i'm not kidding you it says 18 on the outside outdoor thermometer because that's sitting in the sun so in the sun it's 18 you think this is going to get burnt by being in the sun at 18 i don't think so it's a mango it's a freaking mango. If a mango gets burnt when it's 18, we're in big trouble. Um, by the way, I left that um, papaya there from last year. It's the only papaya that's su not survived, but seems to have survived from last year. Because I didn't protect the papayas. I lost all of them, except this one. And when I say this one, it's dead all the way up and down. But down at the bottom... Okay, it looks like it's rotted. Yeah, I was going to say, down at the bottom it's green, but... Nope, it's dead. Especially after watering the mango. All the water I gave the mango has finished off this papaya, which should be... Which prefers to be dry. Anyway, this is why I left it in the ground. Because if you go deep enough... If you go deep enough... It's green. It's green, guys. Hang on, let me zoom in. There, see that? See how it's green? 
Anyway, it doesn't look like it's going to make it. Doesn't matter. I left it there just in case, in case I got lucky. But I've had no luck with papaya at all here in, um, in Melbourne. Fruiting, I'm, I'm talking about fruiting papaya, not ornamental. Okay, so that's tree number two. That, that little pipsqueak. Look how small it is compared to my, to my shoe. Tiny. Okay. Tree number three and number four. I planted them together. The uh, jackfruit and the champadec. Oh, by the way, I got an update from Ross Creek. Ross Creek and they confirmed that the champadec... Jack is a champed deck right so I got an email back and they confirmed that uh, they made a mistake with the label I left I left the wrong label on there um, it's, it still says champed Jack but it's actually champed deck um, yeah so we've got the um, black gold jackfruit on the left and the champed deck on the right and the reason I planted them together, close to each other, is, well, I'm just using common sense and logic. And the logic says that the chances of one or the other or both surviving the first winter are very low chance of that. I am going to protect them, right? I'm going to double wrap them in winter with frost cloth uh, around and above. They're going to get full protection. Uh, even, even if I do that, because they're so young, uh, again, the chance of survival is very low here in my cold seven-month-long winter. Um, and the chances of the champed deck surviving beyond that are even slimmer than the jackfruit. So we're talking um, low chance survival for the jackfruit an extremely low chance survival for the Champadec. So the chance, the chances are that the Champadec probably won't make it, right? So that's why I put them together. It's one or the other. Now, if both of them survive winter, well, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> That'll be a good thing. And guys, if they do happen to survive and do well, right? A lot of ifs, if. They both survive. Um, one can grow beneath the other one. It looks like the, the jackfruit... Oh, by the way, these are both seedlings. It looks like the jackfruit's going to be the big brother protecting the chepadec, growing below it. So this one will grow... Uh, the jackfruit will grow above the chepadec and it'll be its canopy. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? I hope you do understand. So that's the, the idea of planting them together. Otherwise, I could have planted one over there and the other one over there, right? But I didn't want to do that because I don't want them sitting under the bananas. I've got bananas on either side. Let me get back here. Right, bananas, bananas. I didn't want them planted like right under the bananas because there's a big corn, banana corn under here and the roots of the bananas stretch right out. As a matter of fact, there were banana roots right here in the middle when I planted them, let alone over there. So uh, that's all the room I had, free, available space. And the other thing is, these uh, bananas are going to protect these babies in summer. I don't have to protect them. I don't have to give them any uh, shade cloth in their first summer because of... The leaves, guys. All these leaves everywhere. Right? I've got all those leaves there to protect the little babies. So that's why many good reasons why I planted them there. Right? I've got about five good reasons. And they're um, raised up. I planted them raised up. Now, what was there before was the lamb has avocado. And I decided to throw it out. To dump it. Dump it and feed it to the um, bananas here. I gave up on it, guys. It was still alive. There was still an excellent chance for it to recover if I gave it all its required um, pampering. But I said, nope, I'm not going to play with you anymore. 
I gave it two years to recover and that was long enough. So that's it guys. That's um, the latest on the Ross Creek tropicals um, in late mid to late um, spring. Sorry, mid to late November. And one other thing, I also planted um, another dragon fruit around this dragon fruit um, area. I'm going to talk about that dragon fruit in another video. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five different varieties of dragon fruit growing underneath this X camellia tree. Right? And they're all going to grow in this mesh, this steel mesh. Yeah, so that's what's going on. And there's the shepherd. It doesn't look like it's going to give us any fruit in its second year. That's all right. The tree's branching out and um, just amazing. It's really surprised me. It's three meters tall in only two years in the ground. Pretty, pretty fast growing tree. Reminds me of the Hass. The Hass grew that fast as well. The bacon's a little slower. A little slower than the uh, shepherd. As you can see the difference. So with the same size when I planted them. But um, the shepherd is almost twice the size of the of the bacon. And it did have a lot of fruitlets, but they, they seem to have all dropped. So we're not going to get any fruit from either, either of them. All right, guys, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Wish me luck. Wish, wish these guys luck. There's a nice banana um, rack coming there. And uh, yeah, that's it. So now I've got, uh, I think, eight mango trees. I think there's eight. I haven't counted them, guys. I, I don't sit here counting the trees, right? Maybe some of you do that, but I don't do that. I just plant and walk away and forget. If you ask me, I forget. I don't know. I don't know how many mangoes I have. I've got too many trees here to remember. Even if I did know, I would forget the next day. I can't remember. There's just too much going on here. Are you kidding me or what? How can I remember everything? It's crazy. All right, guys. That's it. There's the uh, Florigon. I'm, I have high hopes for that one. And there's the, um, the one I planted um, about a month ago, the Early Gold. There has, there's been no gro new growth on it yet. The... Um, the Kensington Pride seems to be doing something. It's got a lot of flowers. And down here, more importantly, it's got some new growth trying to come out. See that there? There, th those little um, guys there coming out. Yeah, it's swelling there with growth. And then we've got the, the Valencia Pride. Also no new growth since I planted it. And the uh, Carabao, Manila Mango. It's got a lot of fruitlets on it. Oh my gosh. I'm hoping that they would fall off, but they're not falling off, they're growing. <laughs> they're doing something I don't want them to do. They're growing. Yeah, but that's a happy camper. And the Bowen over there. He's happy, but the thing is, guys, we're not getting any heat. We had one week of heat, and then we're back to um, early spring weather, right? Very, very mild, too mild, way too mild for mangoes. Mangoes don't want 20 and 15, 15, 20 Celsius. There's that Suriname cherry that someone suggested I should remove and put a mango there. Guys, look at it, come on, pull out that tree. I can't do it, even after eight years of uh, no fruit. I just can't, and it's very attractive. Look how attractive it is. Very, very healthy. All right, guys, over and out. We're going to uh, um, get into doing other things in the garden today. I've got a lot of work to do. I've already actually done a few things. And um, please put a like on the video if you enjoyed it. 
and subscribe to the channel if you haven't that's the Glen mango right I'm hoping all the mangoes will end up looking like this that's high hopes but wish me luck you never know and it hasn't set any fruit yet I'm not surprised because it's too cold look see how all the um, see how the all, all the uh, what do you call them all the flower petals are falling off it's too cold it's too cold for them to set fruit look look at this it's too cold has, has there gonna be any fruit on this with 15 Celsius right but last week uh, a new panicle opened Wow it's a lifesaver this guy here a new panicle for um, for summer so hopefully in summer we might get some fruit from that one up there when it's warmer oh there's some fruit I didn't notice it Wow I just noticed this today so the Glen has set fruit uh -uh, we got um, parrots we've got parrots guys nasty parrots nasty as in damaging oh it just flew off yeah they're reading the petals on the uh, pineapple guava they're eating these petals here that's what they're here for all right guys over and out we're gone thank you bye